Fair shot. Nicely done. Let me trust this one up, and I'll make my way over to you. There you are. Any new revelations? So you met with that gleaner again, this time to capture a hornbill. I understand catching and bringing in creatures from the outside, but what's the point of chasing after ones already here? Oh, it's a simple thing, really. Occasionally, we remove specimens no longer needed for study. Or those we've had difficulty raising. But we can't simply turn them loose. Safely returning such creatures to their native habitats is another facet of a cleaner's duties. But not in this case, I'm afraid. I've been asked to bring the bird below. The restricted section in the lower levels of Labyrinthos. Open only to a select few researchers hand-picked by the Forum. The projects down there are the subject of rumor and hearsay. Forbidden magics. Advanced technologies that can never be allowed to fall into outside hands. Even Archons are not privy to the truth. Those who are, the researchers involved in this secretive work, are not permitted to walk freely in the city, and are instead required to live in isolated quarters. What could a facility subject to such strict security protocols possibly need with a hornbill? An... an experiment? Possibly. I wasn't afforded an explanation. But judging by the requisition list given to me and my colleagues, I doubt it's for any kind of advanced research. I'd be more inclined to believe we were making preparations to migrate to the south. Mericidia or thereabouts. What? Why would you say that? Much of the flora and fauna we were asked to procure could serve as reliable sources of sustenance. They're comparatively hardy species, too, able to endure harsh climates. And among them are specimens known to be effective in improving soil quality and purifying water. When you put it that way, migration does sound like a reasonable assumption. That's all it is, though. An assumption. Through our tasks, we gleaners glimpse only bits and pieces of the forum's plans. Our prime concern is that our requisitions, be they living or otherwise, are properly preserved for the knowledge of future generations. Now, I really must be going. I regret that I cannot reward you as you deserve. Perhaps you might reward us after a fashion, then. It is imperative that we reach the lower levels. And seeing as you are already set to descend with your assigned cargo, mayhap we could accompany you as your... assistants. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Once the animals have been prepared for transport, we send them down separately via the lift. I will, of course, follow after to make my report. But I can hardly pass you off as porters when there's nothing left to carry. Indeed. Pray forget I said anything.
How do you feel about climbing? If you've strength and the courage to brave it, then there is another way down. This path leads to the 33rd facet, a mine shaft excavated during one of our expansions of Labyrinthos. While I cannot guarantee that the passage is safe to traverse, it should provide access to the meteor circuit below. I never even knew such a place existed. Thank you, this is the perfect solution. You're quite welcome, but consider yourselves warned. If the going proves too treacherous, you'd do well to turn back. Well, turning back is hardly an option, not when we've come this far. Let's go and take a look at this mine shaft.
Yes, that would be Raj Zadhan. Hardly anyone has been allowed in or out since our troubles with the tower began. The faithful citizens huddle inside the city walls, and commerce has all but ground to a standstill. I pity the satrap, the trials he must be facing. Well, he... He is the most important person in Radzadhan. Long ago, this island was home to two tribes of Matanga, the Gajasura and the Arkasodra. When the Aura came to these shores, it was the Arkasodra with whom they joined forces. Together they defeated the war like Gajasura, forcing them to flee Thavnair altogether. Peace and prosperity reigned for a time, until a clan of Hyor from the mainland decided they wanted the island for themselves. It was a direct ancestor of the present satrap who arbitrated that conflict and welded the warring factions into the nation we know today. And ever since, a member of that esteemed lineage has inherited this somewhat unique position. You see, by and large, the state is run by the people. But when problems arise, it is the satrap who mediates a solution. The stability provided by the satrap is what has allowed Raj Adhan to thrive all these years. And it was the satrap himself who entrusted us with this duty. We will not fail him, nor our countrymen. What is the delay with the vessel? I told you I need to adjust those ratios. I come all this way to admire one of my splendid towers, and what do I find? Fools! Attempting to ward off its tempering influence with magic trinkets. I seem to recall a similar experiment in ages past. What was that man's name? Oh, something. Oe? Oh, another, another body, another, another time. time. Who could be expected to remember every trivial detail? Allowing them to construct such handy talismans would be counterproductive to my plans. And yet, I find myself deathly curious. How will they manage this feat with the limited knowledge and resources at their disposal? Complications be damned, for we cannot escape the nature of our souls. And I, as ever, am my own worst enemy.
I see our taskmasters have allowed you. You have to hand it to these alchemists. They are determined to see this endeavor of their. I've never been one for blind optimism, but I sincerely get the sense they're close to a breakthrough. They had better be, or all this effort was for naught. The peoples of Eorzea, of the Far East, of Thavner, children of this star united in common cause against a dire threat. Yet ere they succumbed to suicidal madness, were not the Telophoroi born of her body as were we? They who cling to life and the promise of the morrow's dawn, against they who desire death and an ending of their own orchestration. The victors of this war alone will hold the right to answer the question of existence, of its meaning, and its worth. Poetic and ominous to a fault, that said. If it's an existential debate in nature, then our arguments might not be as persuasive as you'd think. Van Daniel wants to die and take everyone with him in an orgy of pain and suffering. An utterly vile and unforgivable idea. And yet, when spat upon by fate and wailing in the deepest pit of despair, who among us can say they have not entertained similar thoughts? There are nights black as pitch, bereft of hope, and no words of comfort can reach you. And it's all you can do to grit your teeth and choke back the bile. The more you see and suffer life's injustices, the more difficult they become to bear. Vengeance is nurtured in similar soil. Though your anger has a broader focus, the sentiment is much the same. A fervent desire to destroy others, to see them drown in torment, as you have. That about sums it up. The will to endure is not always as strong as the urge to burn it all down and salt the earth. Survival be damned. It's a struggle, often close and brutal. Indeed. Well, I, for one, shall pray survival proveth more appealing in the end. As will I. Besides, our chances are much improved when we've the company of others committed to the cause of life. Our vengeful dragoon here is proof of that. What is it? What did you see? Van Daniel, are you sure? If he knows we've been working on a countermeasure. It holds. The vessel holds. This is the one. At long last. Finally created a talisman strong enough to withstand our experiments. We've named it a warding scale for the time being. With this in your possession, your soul should be completely shielded from corruptive ether. Afforded such protection, any one of us may approach the towers without fear. Thou hast mine admiration. Tis an invention of historical significance. I thank you for your kind words. But I would prefer you keep them unsaid until we test the talisman's efficacy in the field. It is for the next stage of our plan that we summoned you in the first place, to accompany me to the Tower of Zot. 
Should the scale prove effective, as I very much hope it will, then you'll have little to do. But should the effect be weaker than anticipated, I must ask that you restrain me, or knock me senseless. Either way, we are fortunate to have you with us. Nidana, I... Are you certain you wish to do this? If others are to trust our creations, then we must have faith in them first. And as the senior researcher, it falls to me to lead by example. But should I fail to return, then learn what you can from this attempt and apply it to the next. Our work must continue. Is that clear? We'll keep an eye on the place while you're away. Assuming Fang Daniel is lurking about, there's no telling what mischief he has in mind for us, or you. Shall we be on our way? I'll have one of the soldiers at the hatchery prepare us a boat, and we can set out from the northern shore. I'll see you there.
We should soon cross the threshold of the Tower's influence. Any moment now. It's working! And you... you are still yourself? Then I'd like to see how it fares closer to the tower if we could. So good. The scale's protection appears to be holding. If we can just make it to the tower's entrance. A few more steps. to the sisters we made it and the scale has proven itself to be everything we hoped it would be now we can focus on production once we've equipped and returned with an entire survey team this menace will soon give up its secrets You'll only hurt yourself thrashing about like that. Stop! Oh, you can't do this! Please! A little late for heroics, I'm afraid. Mm. The similarities are striking. My, my! Such hostility! Never before has my artistry so displeased. My patrons of old would have positively squealed in delight, though, between you and me, I find gushing praise exhausting. Allow me to tell you a story. Surely you've yet to hear the one about Van Daniel, the sundered Asian. I inherited the position and the soul of the Van Daniel who sat on the convocation in the time of the final days, theoretically speaking. Practically speaking, that fact is of no consequence. I was born and lived as, well, me. Eventually, I was recruited into the Asians and imbued with the former Fan Daniel's knowledge and memories. But 
I never felt that they were truly a part of who I am. to explain. But perhaps if I told you who I was before my Asian embrace, although that chapter too is a past I've long since discarded. I have it on good authority. You've poked your nose into an elegant ruin or two. Yes? Then I expect you've heard of me. The old. Um, at your service. Imagine a nation of unbridled prosperity. Every need met, day after day of unbroken, unshakable peace. Existence fulfilled. And ripe for decay. You are a genius without peer, Amon. However do you conceive of such delightful experiments? That fool was beside himself with panic when he awoke with the head of a bull. <laughs> Even his cries for help emerged as so much guttural lowing. Oh, oh, the memory of it. <laughs> my poor sides. My friends and I were so consumed by laughter, we struggled to breathe. No more than entertainment for bored wastrels ignorant of its worth. My all-consuming work. But it was not their only indulgence. For they were ever hungry for stimulation. Slaves to the slightest hint that amusement was afoot. Our nation was ailing, but I would see the poison purged. I resurrected a legend, our first and greatest emperor. And just as I had planned, he set our wayward empire back on the path of conquest. An inexhaustible ambition carried us onwards, always onwards. Yet, he who delivered to us such glory was not to be satisfied. Heed me, Armand. No matter how vast one's empire, or full one's treasure vault, all is rendered meaningless by death. In the end, all is lost. You know as well as I that the Emperor stands to lose this war. And so I have come to claim you. For while your methods leave something to be desired, we cannot deny the results of your work. And as fortune would have it, the seat of Van Daniel, your rightful seat, lies vacant and waiting. Take your place amongst your peers, rather than die a pointless death amidst the ashes of your doomed nation. Send one of your clones to the Crystal Tower that you might see for yourself. See what lies ahead. The fall of the Empire affirmed the truth. Majestic and tragic, as the Emperor foresaw. Scheme as you like, build as you will, nothing endures. What is life but a brief jaunt ending in emptiness?
so easily distracted. Why, why, I almost left without saying farewell. As for your friend, you needn't worry. These pawns are far more useful to me alive as fuel for the primates. Uh, uh, uh. If you attempt to pull them free, they will die. So, enjoy tackling that conundrum with your comrades. We shall meet again! Not in one of these mind spires, oh, no, no. But somewhere more suitably grandiose. Your favorite playmate is ever so eager to see.
A vast rock squats upon Favnir, and to its stony surface clings the city of Rods at Han. Ye who enter here are subject to the scrutiny of gods, the gate's most watchful eye. The orb which beholdeth the truth of all things. Pass beneath its hot and piercing gaze, bearing down like a second midday sun. The fragrant haze, a mixture of sweet incense and acrid smoke. The cries of merchants mingled here with lively melodies accented by dancers' feet. Travelers seduced by vivid sound and colors were once swallowed up by patchwork streets. But no such scenes to savor now. To what somber present does that divine eye bear witness? Here we are, Magadota. It seems a shame to bring you here directly. Under normal circumstances, it would have been my pleasure to show you the sights. And it would have been our pleasure to see them. Alas, it seems our tour of the city will have to wait. I'm afraid so. Come, we should head inside. Your Excellency, may I present our honored visitors. Ah, splendid. Most splendid. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ahawan, satrap of Radzat Han. Our alchemists tell me your assistance was invaluable in the creation of the warding scale. Such deeds ought to be recognized in person. Thus did I have young Varshan convey you here forthwith. On behalf of my people, may I express to you our sincere gratitude. I assume you speak of Nedana. A regrettable incident indeed. Her colleagues insist that we honor her wishes and trust in the talisman that it will be instrumental in saving Nedana and the others. I am eager to hear your opinion on the matter, so let us not stand on ceremony. Come, sit. I think not. This charade has gone on long enough. Show yourself. Forgive me, but were you expecting musicians, perhaps? There are no performers waiting in the wings at present, 
But arrangements could be made if you'd prefer. Nay. He hath the right of it. The time for artifice is past. Raise the curtain. As you wish. You travel as assistants to the students of Valdesian. But you are known to me. Even here have we heard of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I am Vritra, and for years uncounted hath this Isle served as mine abode. Vritra? Of the First Brood? Sibling to Hreisvelga and Nidhogg? I, mine elder brothers, of Midgard's former spawn, I was last to hatch. Well, isn't this a surprise? We were told Rods at Harn had an alliance with a dragon. Not that a great worm sat in the Sartrap's own hall. A necessary subterfuge, as the true tale of our nation history illustrates most effectively. In the beginning, the rock upon which our city is built was home to Vitra, and Vitra alone. In time, the ancestors of the Matanga came to the island and established a foothold. But never did they dare disturb the worm's lair. Next to arrive with the Aura, adopting the example of the Akasodra allies, they too treated Vitra with reverence and respect. And for many years, an understanding between our forefathers and the Great Worm endured. Until marauding heroes from the mainland came, threatening to shatter our peace and trap when it seemed all would be drowned in blood. Vitra himself came forth and quelled the rising conflict. A peaceful accord was reached, and oaths sworn in Vitra's name. Thus begun the dragon's governance of the fledgling state, which was to grow into Rad's Atham. But if Vitra is still here, then your position as Sartrap is just... A charade, yes, and one which my family has performed faithfully for generations. Many envy the great worms their power. Were it known that I ruled here, then the fires of war would burn without end. I would not be the flame which consumeth my people. Those few who join me in laying our country's foundations were, perforce, Sworn to secrecy. Your eye. It was taken. Tis here, buried within the semblance of flesh. The body before thee is but a simulacrum, constructed by the finest artisans of Razathan. With mine eye nestled within, it doth serve as an inconspicuous vessel for my will. Ah. That would explain why I felt the presence of a dragon upon our first meeting. I am woven with words fashioned to deceive such arcane senses. Though twas short-lived, it seemeth thy fusion with my brother hath left thee much altered, Estinian warm blood. From the very first, we sensed the nature of one another, yet did neither one of us bear his fangs. That is all I need know of thee for now.
With my secret thus revealed, I have for you a proposal. Not as a worm of the first brood, but as the ruler of Rad's Adam. With all haste must we take in hand the finished talismans and breach this foul spire. Thence, should it lay within our power, dispel its wicked influence. Yet even with the assurance of the warding scales, the narrow confines of the tower doth limit the size of our force. And thus denied strength in numbers, thou must choose thy soldiers with care. Just so. Yet though our radiant host is formidable, thou and thy comrades have contended with a multitude of primal beings. Most recently, thou didst cast down false gods in Pagalthan and Kartanau, I am told. Tis upon that strength I would call. The Scions have proven themselves the most capable, and I ask that you serve as the tip of our spear. Talismans would, of course, be provided for each of thy companions, and should you agree to this undertaking, more will be provided to make use of as you see fit. There's no denying it's a dangerous proposition, but the rewards may far outweigh the risk. Just think of what we might accomplish if we could equip all our allies with warding scales. I worry, however, that even the four of us may be too few for what you have in mind. Might we regroup with our friends first to discuss the matter? Tis no trifling task that I have laid before you. Go. Steam your hearts and hone your plans. Such time as you require shall be spent in crafting your protective charms. It seems a quick trip back to Charlia is in order. Will thou not lend thine aid? Whether your request be made as a great worm, or the ruler of Rods at Han, I see no reason to refuse, nor will I.
Hard to look away, isn't it? But they're more than pretty flowers. Heart blooms are attuned to ambient emotion. don't seem convinced, but believe me, it's true. This ashen grey, for instance, it mirrors the anxiety and urgency of those working nearby as they rush to fulfill sudden orders. Intense feelings like those spur the petals to change colour. Bright glowing hues in the presence of joy, dark, subdued shades for frustration or despair. Yet even with the collected wisdom of Charlian at our disposal, we've yet to identify the underlying principle of this empathic effect. And there are other mysteries besides. Although the flower is extraordinarily long-lived, its low reproductive rate has made it difficult to find younger populations growing in the wild, with too few sightings to map its distribution, and no closely related species to track. We've been unable to pinpoint its land of origin. To further complicate matters, every culture, even dimly aware of its existence, has given it a different name and mythos. Our attempts to study it via the historical record have been an exercise in frustration. As an avid botanist myself, I should one day like to unravel the heart bloom secrets. But I'm afraid other duties must take precedence. I will leave you to your thoughts. Have you learned aught of interest? A flower that reacts to one's feelings. Strange. 
I must say, I have never heard of such a thing. This is all very fascinating. But as it stands, we fail to gain any significant insight into the Forum's undertaking. Indeed. While there is certainly enough activity to support Erinville's supposition that a priority has been placed on improving food production, and fortunately for our investigation, these workers were never informed as to how their duties served the master plan. <sighs> if only we could interrogate the forum members directly. Isn't that the entrance to the Arcane? Look, there! I think that's Erinville. A little difficult to tell from here, but, but I think you're right. He did say he was coming down to make his report. Erinville receives his orders from the Forum. Would it not follow, then? that the superior to whom he reports is a forum member, or at least a close associate. You mean to eavesdrop on their conversation? <laughs> what of the risks? Ours alone to bear. We won't interfere with Erinville's work, nor will he be implicated as an accomplice. If you're not comfortable taking part, I can do this alone. Nay. I said myself that I wished to know Father's intentions, and no answers will be forthcoming should we simply ask nicely. We can apologize later, should it come to it. Right now, we need every crumb of information we can get our hands on. Consequences be damned. It might be best if you came along as well. In fact, we should all... certainly sounds like a plan. I'm glad you agree. Quickly! Erinville is on the move. We need to get closer before we lose him. reach you. 